This is a Thunderbolt 4 docking station by Acer. This is a 16E1 and the model number is ODK490. Now, let's start with transparency. This item was sent to me free of charge for the purpose of making videos, creating content about it. And I have been using it for almost four weeks now, so I do have my thoughts on it. Now, of course, this item is not perfect, but for the price, I think that it does offer some pretty good value especially when you compare it to other devices out there. Now this is a 16 in one and that number can be a little bit misleading because they actually count even the DC plug port as one of the 16 ports, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. It is still a very, very good device. Now out of the box, you get the docking station itself, of course, and this docking station itself is really premium feeling. It does feel pretty hefty. It is pretty much almost 100% metal in its construction. So it does feel very, very premium. It feels really, really high quality. Now, in the front, you have some a few ports and uh, you get a headset plug so that you can connect those headphones that have uh, both the audio as well as the microphone in a single port. So the TRRS port goes straight into this because it's a combination jack. You get an SD card reader, you get a USB-A port that supports 10 gigabits per second, and you get the host USB-C port, which is actually a Thunderbolt port, and this one goes directly into your computer. Now, the first caveat, I guess, that I have with this uh, docking station is that the upstream, I believe it's called, the host port, the one that connects to your computer, I feel that it should be in the back of the docking station, not in the front, because that's a cable that you pretty much never unplug. So, in fact, it also comes with a locking mechanism for the cable because you're not supposed to be plug unplugging it and plugging it often. So, it is a pretty good locking mechanism, by the way, so the cable is not going anywhere unless, unless you unscrew the mechanism. But yeah, I feel that this should be in the back side of the docking station. This is not the only docking station that does this. I mean, I don't know why these companies insist on having the, the upstream port in the front, but you know, I'm starting to digress. It is what it is, I guess it's not a big deal, but Acer, if you're listening, I really would like to have the upstream port in the back because it's the one that you almost never unplug, you know. You also have a power toggle in the right side of the front side of the docking station. So when you plug it in to power, it defaults to an off state. So you need to press it to turn it on. If for whatever reason the unit loses power, like in a power outage or you unplug it from power, then when you plug it back in, it's going to again be in a turned off state. So you need to press the button to actually start the dock or turn on the dock. Now on the back side of the dock where the upstream cable should be plugged in, you know, you get the power adapter port. And like I mentioned before, this is one of the 16 in one, which I, yeah. you get three Thunderbolt 4 ports. So this means that you get two additional Thunderbolt ports. So from one Thunderbolt 4 port in your computer, you get three. So it's two additional ones aside from all the other ports that I just mentioned and the ones that I'm going to mention right now. Okay, so you also get another USB-A 10 gigabit port and two additional USB-A 5 gigabit ports. So plenty of USB-A ports for you to connect on all your devices. You also get a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So that's actually really good. It would have been awesome if it was a 10 gigabit, but still 2.5 gigabit is very likely more than enough for almost everybody out there. Unless you need to connect to a NAS or something like that for video editing or some heavy file transfers, then you probably would need a 10 gigabit port, but you know, for everybody else, even a one gigabit port should be more than enough and you get a 2.5 gigabit in this case. Now you also get four display ports, four display, ports. Now two of these are DisplayPort and two are HDMI. Now there is one caveat with these ports and that is that you get two streams. So for each stream you get a DisplayPort and an HDMI. You can only use one 
of the boards for each stream. So in other words, you can either have two displays connected to DisplayPort or two displays connected to HDMI or one display to connected to a display port and another display connected to HDMI. And it can be, you know, cross, you can mix and match any way you want, but from each stream, only one of the two ports can be used at the same time. Okay, so the unit itself does support four display, four displays connected to it. However, the way you distribute the displays is as follows. From the three Thunderbolt 4 ports that you have, you can connect up to two displays. It doesn't matter which Thunderbolt port you use, but you can only um, plug in a maximum of two displays. And from the other, the Stream 1 and Stream 2, which has the HDMI and display ports, you can connect up to two displays, so one on each stream. And like I mentioned before, it can be either display port or HDMI in either one of the streams. So that way you can plug in a maximum of four displays. Now, another caveat that comes with the use of the four displays using this docking station is as follows. At least in the case of Mac OS, I believe in Windows, this is not the case, but I'll get to it. In Mac OS, you need to download a driver from displaylink.com slash downloads to enable the DisplayPort and the HDMI ports on this docking station. I plugged in a monitor via HDMI and there was no signal until I downloaded the display link drivers into my Mac Studio. That is not the case, however, for the Thunderbolt 4 ports. I was able to connect a display via Thunderbolt 4 uh, port without having to install any, dis any display adapters, any display drivers uh, for that matter. So keep in mind, only to be able to use DisplayPort or HDMI from the docking station, you do need to download drivers. The really big caveat with using display drivers on macOS is that they require you to enable screen recording. Now, this is probably because these displays are actually virtual displays and not real, you know, real drivers. But uh, having the screen recording enabled means that you will have trouble when streaming your movies or series from services like Netflix, Max. Prime Video, etc., because of the DR DRM protection. So as soon as you have the display active with the display drivers, you will not be able to see your movies or your series because you, you, you will only get a blank screen, a black screen rather. You can hear the, the audio and you can see the subtitles, but you cannot see the video itself. And as soon as you disable the drivers, then the video immediately comes back to the screen. So it's a DRM protection. So I guess you blame Apple and you blame, you know, the streaming services because they're way too picky with their protection, you know, and whatnot. But yeah, there's that really big caveat. And I'm not sure it would count as a deal breaker because uh, you do get four displays, the ability to connect to four displays. And you only need to download the drivers if you're using the HDMI or the display ports. Again, if you're using the Thunderbolt 4 ports, you do not need to download any drivers, so you can continue to watch your movies and your series and whatnot. So yeah, there's that very big one, that one very big caveat. Okay, so a little bit annoying. You can simply right click on the status bar and then disable the display link drivers and then the video immediately comes back up. Then you can enable it again if you want to re-enable your monitors. So, you know, you put on the balance what you prefer. And again, it's not a big deal, not a deal, not a big deal breaker in my opinion, because you can simply turn off the display drivers and enable them as you need them. Okay, so, but it's really important to keep in mind in my opinion. So I guess that the those are the main caveats I have with this Thunderbolt docking station and those are display drivers they do have issues with streaming services and that the upstream port i believe should be in the back so i guess that's the only two complaints i have now regarding performance i did try the ethernet card it worked pretty well you do not need drivers for the ethernet card even though the manual does suggest you downloaded some drivers i didn't and it still works perfectly fine and um 
I also tested transfer speeds with a NVMe device, external storage with an NVMe enclosure, and the speeds were completely unaffected, even though I had a display connected, as well as you know transferring files or doing a speed test rather. So no hidden performance whatsoever. So in that regard, this is working as intended, working just fine. So yeah, what do you think about this docking station? I would like to see your comments in the description down below. Well, under the description, the comment section, you know, you know where the comments are. I would like to see, to read your opinions about this docking station. So yeah, this is the Acer 16A1 docking station, Thunderbolt 4 docking station. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, may God bless you all.